Hi there, it's Gabriel here, SEO manager at Hike SEO. And in this video, we'll be talking about image SEO, how to optimize images for SEO performance. All right, let's dive in. So what you'll learn in this video is what it is all about um, and why image SEO is important for your overall SEO strategy. Also, we'll go through in detail some of the best practices around handling images on your site, how to optimize them, how to make them more visible in the search results and how to help pages rank higher because of these optimized images. So what is image SEO? Basically, it involves enhancing the visibility and relevance of images on a site to improve the rankings in search engines. So it's an essential element to on-site SEO because search engines consider images and the loading speed when ranking web pages and images can affect that quite significantly um, because of the size of them and if they haven't been optimized well then they can impact the loading speed so there's many different elements to that not just the loading speed but that is a big factor in terms of why a page might load slowly so let's look at an example here and this is basically image uh, the images in Google the image search and all of these images here have been optimized for search for SEO because they're appearing for a relevant search term which in this case is image SEO and they're appearing in Google um, for that matter so people who click on those images um, might go to that website that it's from and that website will get additional organic traffic so you can see it's really important to make sure your images are optimized uh, for SEO, for certain keyword phrases as well. So why is image SEO so important? Well, let's go through a few of different reasons. Firstly, increased engagement and reduced bounce rates. So images engage a lot more effectively than text because uh, they're because we're visual beings and uh, basically they also contain a lot more information within them. So you've probably heard the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, sometimes it's worth a lot more than that. There's a lot of information that can be contained in there. And that's why infographics are so popular uh, these days. Um, also, it keeps visitors longer on pages uh, because of their engaging nature and decreases bounce rates, which are positive ranking signals to Google. So it helps the page rankings indirectly in that sense. Increased organic traffic potential. It provides more visibility in image search engine results, and that can lead to more traffic to the site. Optimized images create better context for the page content, and that leads to higher page rankings and traffic. Better mobile optimization. So when images are responsive, meaning that they resize and maybe swap out depending on which device they're on, um, and they're optimized in terms of size and all of this, especially for mobile devices, they'll look better, they'll load faster, and they'll engage users a lot more. So this will support the overall page rankings and increased organic traffic as well. Increased accessibility and inclusivity. Uh, so basically optimizing images in specific ways enables people with visual disabilities to still understand the images on a web page, even though uh, these people with visual impairments may not be able to physically see them, but they'll still be able, able to understand what the image is. This creates an inclusive environment and allows more people to engage with the content. Appear in rich and featured snippets. So combining structured data elements with images allows them to appear in rich snippets and featured snippets within the search engine results pages. So you've probably done a Google search recently and saw that there's little thumbnails or images within there. And those are basically images pulled in using um, the structured data elements. So it's a really useful way and it makes it more engaging. High there's high chances that you actually click on one of those over just a plain text one. So again, increase click-through rates and that leads to more organic traffic. So let's talk about some image SEO best practices. Firstly, choose original images. Why is that? 
because it's essential for standing out in a crowded online landscape where images tend to be reused and reused and reused. It gets boring over time. So by creating original images, um, it provides authenticity and uniqueness, makes it more appealing to users in search engines. So avoid using stock images and common photos that have been recycled over and over again, because chances are, if you're a regular web user, you've probably seen it and it's not very enticing. So you want to use original photos because they're more engaging and it's more likely that a visitor will click on the image in image search. Choose the right image format. So there are many types of image formats, but the most common types are BMP, um, GIF, JPEG, PNG, WebP, and SVG. So let's explore each type briefly and what they're ideally used for, like the pros and cons. So firstly, we got BMP or bump map. So these types of files are rarely used for the web because of the large file sizes, but it can be suitable for certain applications. For example, certain graphic design, um, especially texturing, uh, these are used quite a lot. Um, then we have GIF files, and these offer basic SEO benefits with support for transparency and animations. You've probably seen these animated GIFs online, um, but they have a limited color palette, which is the downside. So then you have JPEGs. These are probably the most common out there, and they're ideal for photographs and complex images, but not so suitable for transparency. They don't actually support that. Um, they're widely used for its efficient compression um, and positively affects the SEO by providing page um, load times improvements. So then we have um, PNG files, and these are also widely used on the web, and they're suitable, suitable for images with sharp edges, with text, and transparency. So more for graphics and ones and images that require like high definition and, and accuracy. And these provide SEO advantages with lossless compression and transparency support. So then we have WebP. So this standard is becoming more and more popular over the years for the web because of its efficient compression technologies and support for transparency. So it's even more efficient than JPEG and PNG. Um, it's, de it's designed from the ground up for the web and it excels in SEO performance because of its efficient compression and transparency features. So then we have SVG um, or scalable vector graphics. So these are perfect for icons, for logos, and any graphics that need to be scaled larger or smaller without losing quality on the web, particularly in responsive design contexts. So let's say you have a logo and you want it to look good on a small screen, like a mobile device, perfect. And you want it to look even like perfect on a large desktop without any kind of pixelation, perfect. You got SVG takes care of that. So it off also offers strong SEO benefits through the scalability as well as file size. So let's summarize this. So the first choices, the top two are WebP and SVG. Um, these are the best if you can get them and if you can use them. If you can't, that's fine. Then the runner-ups, which are still widely used on the web and for SEO are JPEG and PNGs. And then try to avoid using BMPs or GIFs. They're less suitable for web usage and SEO because of their limitations and their file size uh, and, and everything that basically we covered previously. Next is give your image file a descriptive name. So why is this important? So file name is more than just a label for your file. It basically is an opportunity to provide context to search engines and to users. So make sure that you use clear, relevant and concise file names um, that accurately describe the image's content. And so for example, in this one, um, we have a dog in the woods and there's a hut behind him. So I would name this file black lab with red collar in forest with wooden hut .jpg. And that seems an appropriate name. You might want to shorten that a bit more. I mean, that's quite a long file name, 
but just make sure that you focus on the main elements. Like there's a black dog in the woods. Um, that should be good enough. Resize your images to the appropriate scale. So this improves user experience and page loading times because um, when you have a larger resolution image, that translates to a larger file size and hence a slower loading time for the web browser to download that from the server. So, but however, you don't want to make the resolution too small because if you make it too small, it will start looking blurry and it doesn't look so nice. So it kind of ruins that whole idea of having an image in the first place. So you want to balance it out well. So for example, here's an image of a cat. Um, it's quite high resolution, 3,332 by 3,432. But this file size is really large. It's 2.7 megabytes, which is way too big for an image on a web. So let's say I resize it down to 1024 by 1024, which is a reasonable size, keeps the, um, keeps the resolution quite high so you can still see the detail of the cat. And now it's only 233 kilobytes in size, a lot better. Although we can further enhance that as you'll see um, as we go through the next few steps. So then what we want to do is adjust the image dimensions to match the intended display sizes on the pages. Um, so you might have to create several sizes, maybe one for desktop, one for tablet and one for mobile. Um, if you want to make sure that it loads the appropriate size for that device. Um, the exact image size that you resize to really depends on many different factors. Um, firstly, you need to ask yourself where the image is located. Is that with fix that with fixed, like for example, 800 pixels, let's say you're reading a blog post and within that content, it's only 800 pixels wide. Then you will only need to resize it to 800 pixels, for example, or is it a full width that expands to the screen width? Um, and then it becomes a bit more complicated because you need to find a good balance. So if in doubt, a good desktop width is 1920, um, and that's basically the width of a full HD monitor. Um, and that's a good balance of size versus clarity. Compress your images for faster loading speed. So after you've resized the images uh, to the appropriate size, um, you wanna compress them to further reduce the file size. So compression actually reduces the file size while preserving the image quality as best as possible. There's a minimal loss, but you can balance that out to a certain extent. And remember, a, fall, a, a smaller file size equals faster loading times. And a faster loading time for a page gets rewarded by generally higher rankings. It's a small ranking factor, but it's still significant. So if the images are being compressed before uploading to your website, I would recommend using some of the following tools that you can search for in Google. Uh, ImageOptim, uh, ImageCompressor.com, Squoosh, JPEG Mini, JPEG.io, or Kraken.io. And these are all great services to compress your images. Uh, so here's an example of ImageCompressor.com. I uploaded an image of a parrot, and then I slid the slider of the quality level down to about 66. And then you can see the comparison um, from the original to the compressed version. And you can see it saved 71% in size and file size. While pretty much preserving the quality, I cannot really see any noticeable difference between the two. So it really helps um, with saving that file size without sacrificing the quality. Um, if the images are being compressed while uploading, let's say to a CMS like WordPress, use some of these following WordPress plugins that are quite good. So you got EWW Image Optimizer, Image Recycle, Optimus Image Optimizer, Short Pixel, Tiny PNG, WP Smosh, or Yoast SEO. So all of these are great options when you want to compress images. Remove any EXIF data. So EXIF stands for Exchangeable Image File Format. And this data contains metadata about the image. So including 
camera settings, location information. So this more, mostly comes from images that, that uh, you take with a digital SLR or a camera, and it contains some metadata about where it was taken, the details about it, etc. cetera. Um, often this is quite unnecessary for website images and actually can pose like privacy risks, especially the location information. Um, so you want to ideally remove it Plus it removes and reduces some file size and ensures privacy when you share that photo online. So many image compressor tools actually have this feature built in or as an add-on that you can just check mark when you compress the images, it'll just strip that data out. Um, otherwise, just search EXIF remover on Google uh, for alternatives. Add an image title. So an image title serves as a tooltip or a hover text when users place the cursor over an image. You've probably seen this before, but that's what the image title is and shows up as. So this is an opportunity to provide additional content, uh, context or brief description of the image's content. Um, it also enhances the user engagement and experience. Um, this is, it's common actually to add a call to action to this, especially if the image has a hyperlink. So here we go, I'm hovering over this same image on Unsplash, and you can see this little tooltip pops up, black dog outside in sunny autumn forest. So that is the page, the image title um, that is showing right here. Add alt text for accessibility and SEO. So alt text is short for alternative text. And basically it's an essential element for accessibility like we discussed earlier. It provides a textual description of an image for screen readers and visually impaired users. So let's say they're on a website, they cannot see the website, but the screen reader reads out the content. And when it comes to an image, it will actually read out the description, the alt text of that image so that the person can visualize what that image is. Um, search engines also use that alt text to understand the content and the context of an image. So it's also equally important for search engines as well. So try to be as accurate and relevant to what is in the image as possible. So you wanna write alt text as if you are describing that image to someone who can't see it. So be descriptive. Don't say what it is, like in terms of general vague terms, but you want to describe it in detail. Not too much detail, not like you're writing an essay, but in a long sentence or a really short paragraph, something that can really describe that if I was closing my eyes and visualizing it. In this example, I would write the alt text as follows. Two hands on laptop, sat on table with an SEO analytics software open on screen. Obviously there's room for a bit of creative direction here, depending on what you want to highlight, what's more, what's most prominent in the image, but you need to describe it as best as you can. Use captions to describe images. So this is optional. You don't have to, but it can be valuable for providing more in-depth descriptions or context for the images, basically, highlighting for the user what it is. And this is actually visible to the user in the content. It's located below the image, usually in smaller font and outlines provides a bit more information about it. So it's useful for conveying information that isn't really apparent from the image alone, such as explaining a chart or a graph or explaining maybe a, a bit of a story behind the image as to why you shared that. Add image dimensions to avoid layout shifting. So it's important to specify the image dimensions in your HTML code, and many CMSs already do this automatically, uh, and it prevents the layout shift phenomenon. When you load a web page and you see elements loading, and then suddenly you see the elements jumping down because there's a, an image that's supposed to be in that place but the browser didn't know that because there was no pre-specified width and height dimensions. So this creates a jarring experience for users. So, so that's why we want to provide um, these image dimensions there. So before the image loads from the server, 
the web browser can make room in the HTML box enough space for that image to load into. And basically it ensures a more smoother and more predictable user experience. Use responsive images. So if a CMS allows responsive content editing, then different sized images can be used for each device type. And certain CMSs and certain platforms automatically do this for you. You upload one image and it automatically in the background creates different sized versions and then uses the different versions on different devices. However, if you use a custom CMS or the CMS that you use or the platform that you use doesn't support this, you might need to do it manually um, in the responsive design. So this will ensure that the images will adapt to various screen sizes and they'll still look good and load quickly on any device. So here's an example on apple.com. You got the desktop version on the left and you got the mobile version on the right. You'll see they actually use a different image, a different sized image, and also change the orientation of the iPhone there. So those are that's an example of a responsive image right there. Try lazy loading. So lazy loading actually defers the loading of images until the user scroll down the page. And this is a very efficient way of loading a page because you can speed up the process and not have to load all the content on the page when someone lands on there. Uh, so it reduces the initial page load time and improves the performance. Um, and it, you can enable this on your CMS or using a WordPress like a page speed plugin that you can get. Um, or if you're using a managed plug a platform like Wix or Squarespace or, or any of these, they usually have lazy loading enabled by default to naturally enhance the performance of their websites. Serve images via a CDN. So CDN is a content delivery network. And basically it's a service that distributes files across multiple servers globally, and it reduces the server load and improves loading speed, especially those uh, visiting your site from different countries. It's most relevant for self-hosted websites, which use a sing single server. So CDNs, most managed platforms like Wix, Squarespace, etc., they have CDNs built in already. You don't have to worry about that. But let's say you have your own web hosting um, and then you're self-hosting your, your website on there. You might want to look into a CDN to host your website and the images that it has within it. Create an image XML sitemap. So this is a separate sitemap file um, that is dedicated to your website's images. Um, or you can also have your existing XML sitemap with the images within it. Um, so both are completely valid. So this helps search engines discover and index your images more efficiently. So many CMS platforms or SEO plugins have this feature built in by default. Um, and you can just see it working. Um, and it's going to automatically list those any images within a page. But if you're doing it manually, just make sure that you um, follow the specific guidelines for including images in there. So here's an example. Um, if you look at this, this is on Hike SEO. And I've just highlighted the sections where the images are actually listed within each page. So this is a page sitemap. And let's say the first page that has four images, next one has three, next one has four. So you can see that Google and other web crawlers that land on this sitemap will actually know where to find these images easily. Add structured data. So this can result in your images appearing as rich snippets in search results. And this can increase your click-through rates if you have this. So check schema.org entity types. And many of these entities uh, actually use image attributes where the image is used or can be used by search engines uh, within rich snippets or featured snippets. So here's an example. If I type in buy sofas in Google, many of the websites actually have images and because they were included in a rich snippet in some schema markup within their site. And so Google knows where to grab that image and it pulls it in and it makes that 
SERP a lot more enticing to click on, and that can increase the click-through rates. Configure Open Graph and Twitter cards. Well, we all know Twitter is now called X, but a lot of people still refer to them as Twitter cards. Um, and these things, uh, both of those things, enable control on how your content appears when you share it on social media platforms. So it includes the images in these tags um, and ensures the visual content is presented attractively when shared on platforms like Facebook and Twitter or X, um, other sites as well. And basically knows which image to pull in and then feature. So that's it. If you have any questions about image SEO, do let me know. And be sure to check out Hike SEO. It's a fantastic platform, all-in-one tool for SEO, especially for beginners and small business owners or agencies who serve small business owners. And it can help you to get higher rankings and more organic traffic. All right, I'll see you in the next video.